Declaration of Results of the Presidential Election of 9th August 2022 shows that the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IMBC, has not yet garnered universal public confidence and trust in the internal management of the commission and elections. On the 15th August 2022, six days after the general elections were held, Mr. Wafura Chapkati, the chairperson of IMBC, announced the following results. Raira Ondinga, 6.942, 930 votes, representing 48.85%. William Ruto, 7.176, 141 votes, representing 50.49%. David Wahiga, 31,000, 987, representing 0.23%. George Wajakoya, 61,969, representing 0. 44%. Based on their four ascend results, the chairperson of IMBC declared William Samoy Ruto, the first respondent, the presidential candidate for the United Democratic Alliance Party as a president elect. This declaration has precipitated a total of nine presidential petitions that are filed before us to wit number one, presidential election number 001 of 2022, John Joroge Kamau versus Wafura Chapkati and three others, and Raira Amoro Ondinga and seven others named as interested parties. The second petition is presidential election number 002 of 2022, Youth Advocacy Africa and another versus IMBC and 12 others. Third petition, presidential election petition number 003 of 2022, Kerif, Karifa and three others versus IMBC and three others. Fourth petition, presidential election petition number four of 2022, David Kariukingari versus IMBC and nine others. Five, presidential election petition number five of 2022, Raira Amoro Ondinga and another versus IMBC. Six, presidential election petition number six of 2022, by Mom Moses Kuria and others versus Honorable Raira Amoro Ondinga and four others named as interested parties. Number seven, presidential election number 007 of 2022, Okia, Omtata, Okoiti, and others versus IMBC and others. Number eight, petition number 008 of 2022, Juria Nyokabi Cheye and others versus IMBC and three others. And the last one, but not least, petition number 009 of 2022, Ruben Kigame Richete versus IMBC and others. In addition to these petitions, we received a total of 24 interlocutory applications and one preliminary objection, which were filed in this court. Two of the presidential election petitions were struck out. That is petition number 6006 and 009 of 2022 for failure to meet the constitutional threshold as set out under Article 140 of the Constitution. On 29th August 2022, this court also admitted three Amici Curie briefs by the Royal Society of Kenya the Kenya Section of International Commission of Jurists, and John Warubengo and two others. 
Upon perusing and considering the issues raised in the remaining presidential election petition numbers 001, 002, 003, 004, 005, 007, and 8, the responses and the submissions filed thereto, this court found that all the seven petitions substantially raised similar issues and sought similar reliefs. Consequently, on 30th August 2022, this court ordered that the seven petitions be consolidated and designated presidential election petition number 005 of 2022 as the read file. From the consolidated petition, the responses filed and submissions uh, filed by all the parties, the court crystallized the following issues for determination. And those issues are there. We have repeated them several times. I will not read them. Having considered and deliberated upon the consolidated petition, the attendant responses, submissions, and also considering the Amici Curie briefs, we now make the following determination on issue number one, which is whether the technology deployed by IBC for the conduct of the 2022 general elections met the standards of integrity, verifiability, security, and transparency to, to guarantee accurate and verifiable results. As noted in the introduction, lack of trust in the electoral system has endured in Kenya for a long time. This led to the introduction of electoral technology following recommendations made by the Independent Review Commission on the general elections held on the 27th December 2007 popularly known as the Krigler Commission Report. That report recommended integration of technology into Kenya's electoral process for registration, identification of voters, and transmission of results. These were enacted in Section 44 of the Elections Act 2011. By this statute, IMBC is enjoined to adopt technology in the electoral process. As a consequence, the IMBC developed a technology known as Kenya Integrated Electro Management System, KIMS, making Kenya's election process an hybrid as it employed both technology and manual processes. The first, third, and fourth petitioners in the consolidated petition challenge the technology used by IMBC during the 2022 general election. They print that the manner in which technology was deployed and utilized fell short of the prescribed constitutional and statutory standards. As regards the audit of the register of voters, they urge that IMBC, pursuant to its elections operations plan, committed itself to conducting an audit of the register of voters by 31st March 2022. To the contrary, they arrange it only publicly availed the audit report on its website on 2nd August 2022 which was only seven days to the elections. In this, in this report, it was noted that the auditors established serious gaps and risk to the electoral process, including numerous cases of change of voter stations without knowledge or approval of the affected voters. 
grant of voter update privileges in IMBC, IDMs, to 14 user accounts and related to voter registration. Reducing a, the accountability of user activities in the register of voters. Presence of 11 active generic accounts on the MBIS application and the two MBIS users with the same logging identification. Risking unauthorized system users, possible interference, change of particulars on the activation of voters in the system. IMBC's failure to set up access, the certification, and user activity review process. And IMBC was also arranged to have failed to respond to requests by auditors for crucial information. On the integrity of the technology deployed, it was the case for the seventh petitioner that in order to comply with Article 86 of the Constitution and Section 44 of the Elections Act, the technology deployed must be simple, accurate, verifiable, secure, accountable, and transparent. On the simplicity of technology, the seventh petitioner contends that the Kim's kit failed the tests as they were not easily usable by ordinary citizens without expert knowledge. They further assert that IBC was expected to procure and put in place a technology necessary for the conduct of the general election at least 120 days before the election and ensure consultation with the relevant agencies, institutions, and stakeholders. Furthermore, the petitioners arranged that IMBC violated its constitutional duty by delegating the design, implementation, and conduct of the Kim's component of the election to a foreign company, Smartmatic International Holdings, BV. As a result, IMBC staff and the public do not have full comprehension of the Kim's component. They conclude, therefore, that IMBC abdicated and surrendered its role to conduct elections to Smartmatic, and that IMBC vigorously fought any attempt to subject Smartmatic's activities to accountability and transparency including the safeguards required by Regulation 61, 69, and 75 of the Elections General Regulations 2012. In response, IBC has submitted that the electoral system met the constitutional threshold, that all the necessary information was accessed only by the authorized persons. The information was accurate, complete, and protected from malicious modification, either by authorized or unauthorized persons. IMBC maintained an audit trail on activities related to information, and that the information was available and could be authenticated through the use of various security features. In further response, IBC contended that they engaged KPMG on 7th April 2022 to conduct an audit of the vote, register of voters, which was submitted on 18th June 2022. In addition, it issued a briefing on the report on 20th June 2022 summarizing the thematic areas therein and disclosing its findings as well as actions taken to remedy the issues identified. It also conducted its annual audit in compliance with regulations 11 and 12 of the Election Technology Regulations 2017 
and a certification of compliance issued to it on 3rd August 2022. IBC relied on sworn affidavits by Michael Uma, Moses Sunkuri, and Majan Hussein Majan on 26th August 2022, which were to the effect that it published the interim report by KPMG on 8th June 2022 and embarked on remedial measures aimed at effecting the recommendations ahead of publication of the final report. It was ascertained that it could not publish the full final audit report as doing so would compromise the integrity and security of the electoral technology system considering the provisions of the Data Protection Act, which imposes a duty to protect the data of Kenyan voters. On the other hand, <coughs> the first and second respondents urge that even if there was failure of technology, it did not vitiate the result of the presidential election. Upon considering all the printing submissions and the ICT scrutiny and inspection tallying and recount report which fully examined the IBC's result transmission system, RTS, we are not persuaded by the allegation that the technology deployed by IBC failed the standard of Article 86A of the Constitution on integrity, verifiability, security and transparency for the following reasons. One, whereas it is true that the Kim's kit failed in 235 polling stations, 86,889 voters were granted the right to vote manually and the requisite forms 32A were duly filed. This happened successfully in Kibwesi West constituency and part of Kakamega County. Two, while the Hondit report was released to the public seven days before the 9th August election, the register of voters was used at the election without any apparent anomalies. C three, Smartmatic, was procured to provide the necessary technological infrastructure as IBC did not have the capacity to do so. No credible evidence meeting the requisite standard of proof of access to the system by unauthorized persons was induced by the petitioners. The scrutiny report prepared by the registrar of this court did not reveal any security breaches of the IMBC's RTS. IMBC successfully deployed a biometric voter register system which captures unique features of a voter's facial image, fingerprints, and civil data to register and update voter details across the country and also in the diaspora. The BVL captures a voter's facial image, fingerprints, and civil data, which features are unique to each of the voter. In compliance with Section 6A of the Elections Act 2011, IMBC opened the register of voters for verification of biometric data by members of the public for a period of 30 days. Thereafter, the register was re revised to address issues arising from the verification exercise. KPMG then audited the register, and we are satisfied that the inconsistencies and inaccuracies identified during the audit were somewhat successfully addressed. The second issue was whether there was interference with the hap rounding and transmission of Forms 34A from the polling station to the IMBC public portal. The first petitioner 
arranged staging that a person who had access to the RTS intercepted, detained, or stored from 34A temporarily to convert or manipulate it before uploading it on IMBC's public portal. It is arranged also on 11th August 2022, IMBC dumped over 11,000 forms 34A on the public portal between 11 to 11.09 hours. To rebut this allegation, IMBC and its chairperson in their response dated 26th August 2022 denied staging and unauthorized intrusion of the RTS. In that regard, they urge that every image of Form 34A was uploaded immediately after the transmitter of results. The form was received as evidence by the timestamp. Similarly, the first respondent denied these allegations. Our finding, one, no credible evidence was presented to prove that anyone accessed the RTS to intercept, detain, or store forms 34A temporarily before they were uploaded to the public portal. The allegation that 11,000 forms 34A were effect, affected by staging was similarly not proved. Two, the allegation that IMBC is officials and strangers used a tool to tamper with the forms 34A before converting them to the portable document format, that is PDF, that eventually appeared on the public photo was sufficiently explained when IMBC demonstrated how Kim's captured and transmitted the image of Form 34A. Accordingly, we dismiss that allegation. Three, during the ICT scrutiny, it turned out that the transmission logs produced in the affidavit of Justice Nyangaya were of no probative value. The registrar's report shows that the original forms 34A from the contestant polling stations, which were allegedly intercepted, were exactly the same as those on the public portal, and the certified copies that were presented to this court pursuant to the provisions of Section 12 of this uh, Supreme Court Act 20. 11. Four, regarding the allegation that the integrity of the public portal was compromised, this was disproved by evidence of consistent attributes such as unique timestamps, uniform PDF conversions at the polling stations, 